Let's talk about middle and end game promoted classes. Now I did miss a few things, so I'm gonna quickly place them from the previous video. Uh, House Carl, I think is A, uh, high A. It's row attack is actually pretty good. Augur early is completely insane. Uh, Crusader early is about as good as the Lord. And Dark Knights, I'll put it's either high B or low A. It's still a horse, so it still has horse mobility, but it's just much worse than Knight. So Dark Knight, I don't think is really there. All right, so let's reset this. Bad boy. Okay, and we'll just tier this generally. So OP, great, good. I don't know that anything's really bad. I think things are just like niche. I think C for niche makes the most sense. Um, and then we can get rid of D tier. I don't think anything's really so bad it belongs in D tier in this game. All right, so we are gonna be tiering for middle and late game. Some of these things you get post game. I'll still tier those based on what I know of them. Uh, some classes I have more experience with than others, but I did look at every single uh, thing's kit, test it out for at least a few battles on maps and different team comps to get a feel for it. So I just like tried out the furry characters earlier and they have some good things about them. Uh, I think they're outclassed by other options, but let's jump into it. All right, so Swordmaster. Swordmaster I feel like is niche. It's actually, let's, let's change it to like this. Uh, always great. And then this is generalist so sorry so b tier you can use it generally a is like always really good and then uh s tier is use it like optimal basically or like op so c tier is niche like these have niche use cases of poking out enemy evasion tanks and their damage output is not as good they don't have like row and column attacks or board nuke or anything huge like that but they do have some niche use cases of being like frontline evasion tanks. A lot of things can do that though, so it's not really unique anymore. Early game, it definitely is when they are uh, sword fighters, but later on, it stops becoming a unique thing. Uh, Landschnet, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Uh, probably A tier. Early on, Cell Sword has pretty good damage, and Landschnet kind of just maintains good damage. It has combo ability. It has the like the loop attack that allows it to kill and then keep killing and you can set its condition so it goes for low hp uh below like 25 percent below 50 percent target so it can easily reset its own action points and just keep loop killing uh just has good damage output it has decent bulk it can summon mercenaries which can be situationally useful to buy time uh, but it's just a good offense class that i think scales well uh berserker or actually i'm sorry legionnaire uh, so Legionnaire is the advanced form of Hoplite. I think it also is niche. It's really only good for defense and holding positions, and there are better things that can do this. Its damage is really bad. It's probably one of the lowest damage classes in the game. Now, it's a tank, and it's not ne necessarily meant to deal damage, but it also isn't as tanky as other things could be, or as other things can be. But you can use these typically when holding points against physical. If you have magic matchup or enemy warriors, or Breakers, they will get one shot typically. Uh, Legionnaire plus Sainted Knight can tank magic, but you still have to watch out for Breakers. So depending on the enemy team comp, it's not as tanky as it could be. Uh, Berserker is basically the advanced form of Gladiator. I guess you could use these as a generalist. Some people love these things. I find their initiative to be too low. They do have a board attack, but it is ground-based, so flyers do not get affected by it. It can be decent. Um, outside of that, their Valor skill is just fine. It's nothing too crazy. Uh, Breaker. I would say Breaker is like low A. So as A fills out, we'll try to make it sure it's like in low A tier. It's pretty good overall. It has the ability to punish guarding, to one-shot armors. It has decent damage output. It has repeat attack. It's not as much damage as Landschnet, but it's decent. It has good output. You could argue it's high B or low A, at least that's where I think it lands right now. Uh, high Lord, I think, is one of the best classes in the game. It has mobility, it has an insane row attack, especially when crit boosted. It can completely kill an entire enemy front line, like an enemy row, without any like shaman debuff to that row, like defense debuff. So typically what I do is I have Elaine 
use the amber lens to give himself true strike crit, and then I gambler's coin him, and he tends to immediately kill the first row of enemies before they can do anything, and that is pretty ridiculous. <laughs> and he also has other things that are decent about the kit, but he does now have uh, cav weakness, which really late game is not a thing. It's like non-existent. The things that cu that uh, counter calves like wyverns and griffins are very easy to deal with and their initiative is not the best so they're pretty easy to kill before they can even do anything to you uh sniper i don't really have too much experience with sniper i'll just put it in b tier for now i'll just be completely honest with you <laughs> i just haven't run it so i'm assuming it's at least decent because that's kind of where hunter is i have used hunters on a few teams and they were fine a uh, shield shooter i have a little bit more experience with it seems to be a good generalist for like a frontline great shield slash avoid tank or one or the other. Now it always has a great shield, but there is a great shield that gives it a void tank. It has okay damage outputs. It's definitely more damaging than these. So it's easier to throw it in a team. Now, can you make combos off of these things? As far as I can tell, not really, but they're still just decent filler for damage. And as party leader, their range assist, so can't, you can't really go wrong just popping one out just to get some range assist spam. That's ultimately all they can really do. Uh, Rogue, I think, is like a B tier generalist. It's, or like a B tier unit, like a generalist. It can be used in most comps to target specific things, preventing your combo from going off. But beyond that, it kind of just tries to drain enemies active and passive points, which can be decent, probably really good in PvP. But in single player mode, you can just kill the enemies before they can really do much. So that's just much better than using tactics, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, Great Knight, I think, is S tier. It just does everything. Uh, Wild Rush is still OP, even at higher levels. It has really good damage. It can column stun. It can row stun. There is a Lance that gives it row stun. 100 potency physical, 100 potency magical. It's pretty ridiculous. So it can stun in any general formation. It's quick. It damage boosts itself and other calves, and it combos naturally with High Lord, which is also a cav. Some of the best classes in the game are cav, so it kind of just scales all of them, and it's kind of overpowered and insane right now, but it's just really good. It also can do the pile thrust attack to super nuke a single target if it really needs to, but typically it will assaulting Lance to clean up if the enemy frontliners are killed, it will wild rush to open. It can true thrust with the unwavering lance against enemy avoid tanks. It like all throughout the game, unwavering lance allows you to poke out enemy flyers aside from wyverns who do have that anti uh, melee attack. But you can poke out griffins and thieves, and you're not even meant to be a class that's good at doing that. But it just allows you to do that. So outside of that, though, it has like row stun from a specific lance. There's a lot of really good lances in the game that do a lot of different things that have different types of column attacks. It's absolutely ridiculous how good this class is. Uh, Sainted Knight, I think, is similar. It makes a fantastic party leader to negate or largely negate enemy magic assists. It has a pretty decent Valor skill. Its combat is okay, but when paired with a Great Knight, this can help keep this alive, especially against mages, as well as just heal it for general... Uh, combat and prevent magic assist damage from hitting the Great Knight, and the Great Knight can damage boost the Saint so that the Saint's attack is a little bit stronger. And they do kind of pair up really well, and they're also both on horses, so they both have high mobility. So uh, the average mobility of your units affects your squad leader's mobility. So like if you have a Cav with a bunch of Hoplites, it'll, all the Hoplites will slow them down. So if you have a Cav with a Cav, your average mobility will be closer to 300. Now, if you have a whole squad of calves, your average mobility will be 300, and you'll be extremely fast. So, <laughs> but a really good class. It just it fits into any team comp. It's like better than cleric for healing, because it also deals damage. Uh, there are some use cases for cleric, like uh, battery and stuff like this. But I think at the pace of combat on True Zenoiren, the best builds just kill the enemy really quickly, and this just helps get to the enemy, take positions. Uh, heal and do everything you need to. Uh, Doom Knight, I've heard some people say this is really good. I haven't run it enough to really say that it's good or bad. For now, I'll put it in B tier next to Sniper, just because I haven't really run that too much. 
I have used the Dark Knight a little bit, and Dark Knight was kind of underwhelming. Based on the kit of Doom Knight, it seems like it has some potential. Uh, it seems like you'd have to set up a lot of combos for it to really leverage like the low HP combos and things like this. Uh, the problem with being at low HP, though, is assist could potentially kill you, so that's always going to be a threat to it. So that's why I kind of don't like those classes, but it is on a horse, and it seemingly can do some damage, so it's at least a B tier, I would say. Uh, Bishop. Bishop. Bishop, I feel like, is, like, B? I think battery mattered really early on, but once you get four action and passive points, or at least access to that on every single one of your units, everyone can just get ridiculous combos off from the get-go and it's kind of like redundant it's nice to have a bishop squad to just pop it off like to pop it out of a fort and heal you and then pop it back in to conserve item uses but beyond that i don't really run them that much i don't think they're the best thing for quickly beating the game or just like playing fast which there's a time limit so playing fast unfortunately really matters like you'll lose maps if you don't play fast enough so it is really good to pop one out just to heal. But beyond that, I don't value them too much in, in like middle and late game. Uh, Warlock, I, I kind of feel the same. Uh, I'll, I'll put it here. Its damage is decent, but there's definitely better options. It's eclipsed by two specific classes that we'll get into in a second. Actually, it's eclipsed by a handful of classes. <laughs> uh, basically, it just does damage as far as I can tell. And it's... Valor skill just doesn't really do much. The damage is low, it's over time, it's kind of just a waste of Valor points. Uh, Witch? I think Witch is S tier. Sorceress. Sorceress, you still get the teleport, which is fantastic, especially on large maps. Uh, you have Freeze, you get Row Freeze, and if you want, the Witch can give herself uh, max initiative to immediately Row Freeze an enemy, or a group of enemies, a row of enemies, rather. Uh, you can Conferral as well, you can uh, basic conferral for one passive point. So if you conferral a row attack or a board nuke, that's huge value for one passive point. And then you can also tome conferral. Now the wizard can tome conferral too, but he does not board. He cannot row freeze and he cannot teleport. So the warlock doesn't really like he, he brings damage, but there are better things that bring damage that complement a, sor or a, a sorceress more so than a warlock. So like the valor skill and the the hard crowd control is what's pushing her up into S and keeping him out of it. Because he has damage, but he's competing with other damage things that are just simply better. Uh, Druid? So, originally I put Shaman low, and I put Druid kind of low. I think Druid is probably high A tier. I don't want to put it in S because it only really is necessary in Unifi's board nuke. In other board nukes, it's completely redundant. All it really wants to do in these like row attack or board nuke strats is defense debuff a row so that you can kill. And some builds don't even need it and will kill without that defense debuff. So like the Elven Sister builds can typically do this. Um, Elaine's attack can kill without this debuff. Uh, some Great Knights, like Great Knight, um, Great Knights like row stun can do that with the one weapon. There are certain builds and setups that just simply do not need this, but in, for those that do, it's good. And also in a five-man team, if you have like a, a, a team of four, like you have like two to three damage that always kill consistently and then like a front line, or you can just add a druid to it and it'll help you. You can de debuff enemy offense, you can debuff enemy defense to kill faster, or if it's a longer fight, the druid can interact with the enemies to make your team more survivable. Uh, but most classes late game, or at least the ones I tend to put high up, can just straight up take on fights and be fine, and will take minimal to no damage in response to enemy combats, because you either kill most of them before they do anything, or whatever damage gets through gets blocked, mitigated, or avoided through evasion. Alright, Vanguard. I would say this is kind of on the niche side. It's like... It's a tank in theory. The da it's just like the same thing with Legionnaire, right? Like the damage is low. It doesn't have big, obvious, amazing attacks. It doesn't have big, obvious, amazing abilities. It can protect against range assists, but there's better things to handle that. Uh, Wind Fairy charms are pretty common in shops, middle game and onward. So you can just pop one of those if it's really an issue. Typically, it's only an issue on certain small maps or on small sections of certain maps. But there is also a class that for one Valor can 
uh, radius, like in a wide radius, affect all allies to negate first strike and all magic and range assists for a single combat. So it's kind of made redundant through the presence of other classes. And other things just are like objectively better than this thing. Uh, Wyvern Master. Wyvern Master, I think, is like B tier. It's like here. It doesn't have. It does have Dragoon Dive through a weapon, but it's a charge attack, and its damage could be better. Uh, but that being said, you could run it. Now, Unifi's board attack is just better because it freezes and also multi hits. And if it multi-hits and gets conferled, each one of those hits is a conferral damage boost, and then you can crit as well. So then you get like this huge spike. Uh, but this thing could be decent, it's just outclassed by other board nukes. Uh, as, a as a general damage unit, I think other things bring more to the table. It's hard to compete with Great Knight's Row Stun and Column Stun. Uh, this thing can Row Stun using the same weapon, because uh, it's on Lances. So it can compete in that way. And Dragoon Dive is decent. It's also three uh, Valor points, so in order to get it off, you have to get quite a few kills and take some forts and do a bunch of things. Uh, but one nice thing about Dragoon Dive is even if the Wyvern Master is not your party leader, you can Dragoon Dive a land-based unit over rivers, over mountains, and over things that they normally have to run around. So it's kind of nice in that way, so maybe I'll bump it up to low A just for that. It has decent combat. It can kind of hold its own. I don't think it has as good a combat as these, uh, but it has some options and it can kind of enable you to push. I do think it's outclassed by like these things, but it's decent. It's pretty good. Griffin Master. So a lot of people love Griffin Master and Griffin Knights. I'm going to say it's like here. I feel like it's too slow. Now, whenever I say something is too low initiative, someone will always say in the comments, oh, just like initiative fix it. And sure, you can do that, but other things that don't need initiative fixed can just simply run other things and gain more resources in some other way. Like they can get better stats, better damage, more active and passive points. Uh, maybe they can run evasion tanking gear. So it's almost like Griffin Master now, I know it gives you the AoE speed boost. There's also an item that does that. So you could argue it goes up for that. Uh, but for combat, I'm not going to give something S tier just for its Valor skill. Like, this has warp, this has teleport, but it also has other things. So in order to get an S tier, like, I'm, I'm thinking its combat is kind of bad and its speed boost is why it's in B tier, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Uh, I don't find their combat to be that good, especially compared to other options. Uh, Elven Fencer, I think is S tier. It can conferral, it can row attack uh, with hybrid. So hybrid attack hits both physical and magical, and typically it'll get through something. So if you're high magic defense, the physical gets through and vice versa. And it also can single target stun. And what else can it do? It can avoid tank, it can single target stun, it can magic assist if it's party leader. It can Tome Conferral on an Evasion Tank frame, which is really weird because usually that's like a Warlock Sorceress thing and neither of those are Evasion Tanks, but this thing is high Evasion. So it's like a more bulky Evasion Tank utility that also can help with damage. It's really good. It's like you run one of these in almost every one of your teams and you won't suffer. Like, it'll just help you. They're really strong. Uh, let's see, Elven Archer. We'll do the male because we, we'll, yeah, we have a bunch of females in here. Uh, Elven Archer, I think. Hmm, I think it's at least A. I almost want to put an S though. It ha it's almost like similar to Elven Fencer. I kind of want to put it in S because it can, for an active point, it can conferral and give something plus 50 magic potency for all its attacks, including row, column, attacks, and board nukes. So unlike other things, like if you use a tome on something, like a tome conferral, it's a passive limited, right? And then those also do not stack. But this can use an active ability with high initiative to manually boost something, and then it can also be your impetus unit, and then it can also use uh, decent single shot damage to clean up kills if there's anything alive after the board nuke or your row attacks and it can also use ice arrow which combos with sorceress which deals more damage um, or unifi which deals more damage to frozen 
So, and it can freeze up to two targets for two active points. So typically it can magic boost a board nuke, get one to two decent attacks off, and then also be your impetus unit. And it's also an evasion tank. And if you slap a scarf on it, it's an evasion tank with decent durability. And as the party leader, it's range assist. So it kind of does a little bit of everything, similar to Elven Fencer. All right, and it can also cleanse debuffs, prevents debuffs. It has all these things with debuffs it can do. It can, oh, these also can both be evasion tanks that give the evade mechanic on top of being good generalist. Like these are just fantastic things to just throw into a team that's missing like a little bit of some utility or whatever. They can kind of do a little bit of everything, which is very nice. Uh, all right, so we're getting into the furries now. I did play around with the furries a bit, which sounds we really weird. <laughs> it's a very bad phrase. Uh, let's see, the werewolf. So the werewolf has a lot of these follow-up attacks. Same thing with the werefox. The werefox has like such a low amount of health that it can easily die to range assists and, ma and magic assists. Now, all of the furry characters run faster as party leader at night, which is like the, one of their big gimmicks. But for general damage, I feel like it's niche. The, there might be use cases where it's good, but it needs to burn two active points to do a row attack, and its row attack is weak unless the enemies are already low HP. And even if they are low HP, its row attack is basically worse than Berengaria's row attack, which is just insane as hell. Um, and even then, comparing it to other row attacks, it's just not that good. Now, some of their combos where they spam, like, Pursuit and stuff like this can be decent situationally, uh, but... It seems like they have to burn through most of their resources, if not all of them, to do things other classes just do with fewer resources and fewer actions. So I just don't think they're very strong right now. Uh, Werefox, I feel like, is kind of similar. I'll put it in low B tier, just because it has pretty good, like, pursuit attacks that it has built into its kit. So if it has four passive points, it has either uh, two really strong pursuits or up to four like weaker pursuits that are still decent uh its column attack is kind of weak though it's like skirting the edge of like getting into c tier where it's like i just don't understand why you would run this because it doesn't really do anything that other things don't do better it's durability is very poor evasion tanking is very suspect against like spam assist and against true strikes and there are quite a bit of both of those in end game chapters so it kind of just suffers and is kind of weak, but maybe it's low B tier. Unless they, I don't see how there could be, but maybe there's some killer use case that bumps it up in B, but I think it's low B, high C. Uh, Werebear? I haven't really used this much, but if it's like Legionnaire but better, it has to at least be above Legionnaire. <laughs> I'll put this in low B as well, because from what I've been told, it has good damage, and this has the big issue of not having damage. So if this is this but damage, it has to at least be B tier. I could run it more. I did run Werefox and Werewolf a little bit and kind of evaluated them in different team comps and they had a kind of poor showing. But Werebear, if it can deal some damage and also use hammers, it's definitely much better than a Legionnaire. Uh, let's see, Were Owl. This thing I don't think is very good. I'm gonna put this in niche. So, it's a support unit that can give passive points. It has utility active things like giving like plus 50 or 30 accuracy or something like that. And then it can give like regeneration. It gives all these like weird things that don't really help you outright. And it's kind of clear that it's meant to be. Oh, it also has like dispel, which is really like a PVP thing. It almost feels like it's like a PVP class that is really good for fighting other players and maybe some certain Coliseum battles. But when fighting general groups of enemies, things like Dispel pale in comparison to like Rage of the Fairies. So it's like you're fighting over these crazy obvious things that are just really good. And as like a healer, if it is a healer, it, it's not even clear that it is. It's kind of mediocre as a healer. You have to almost like give it a staff that allows it to heal if you want it to heal. And even then it's just kind of like a low HP evasion tank thing. So I don't know, it just seems bad. Uh, let's see, Feather Sword. Feather Sword. Hmm. I haven't run one. I ran. I've run it early to most of the middle game, and I do feel like it kind of falls off. 
So it's hard to really place it. I'll put it in low B tier for now. It seems decent. The flight is okay. It's valor skill is kind of whatever. I think it might even be about as good. Honestly, I think it's like C tier. <laughs> I think it's about as good as a werewolf right now. Uh, f all right, let's go to through this. All right, feather bow. Feather bow seems like it has more use case, more use cases rather. Um, it can blind a row as a passive in response, so that's kind of valuable as like shut down. It has okay-ish damage, some utility. I don't think it's as valuable as an elven archer, but it seems decent. I also don't know that it's a caster like an elven archer, because elven archer. Well, Elven Archer can Mystic Conferral. I don't know that it can Tome Conferral. But this can damage boost board nukes. This cannot. And this also has shut down through a, a multi-hit freeze attack that hits two things. Uh, let's see. Feather Staff. I was looking at Feather Staff. Um, seems like it's kind of similar to this. I don't know. like Kind of like a weird healer thing that you probably don't need. I think there's just better options. It also is a flyer, so Archer Assist is not your friend, and that's a thing that's present in the game everywhere. Uh, feather Shield is definitely much better than most of the feathers. Uh, let's see. I'll put this in like high B tier. So Feather Shield can mirror offensive magic. It can infinitely block for things using self-sacrifice. As long as it's not blocking a lethal blow, it can just keep self-sacrificing. So it has some potential for combos. Um, well, maybe not high B tier, it's kind of generous. Let's say about as good as like these. Uh, but it has some like glaring downsides, like it lacks damage. There are tanks that deal damage. So if you're a tank and you don't deal damage, you're not gonna get into A tier. There's just tanks that also kill things, so <laughs> it's hard to compete on that front. All right, High Priest, I'm gonna put next to uh, Bishop. With the little bit I've used of it, it seems decent. Some people say, some people claim it's very good. Maybe it is. Uh, I'll have to test it out more. Maybe it moves up. Maybe it moves down. Uh, but so far, it seems to be like a bishop that has damage and less uh, support. And from what I've observed of its damage, its damage is not very good. It can remove, uh, I think, buffs from enemies, which is neat, I guess. Uh, but most enemies don't really get good buffs, so I find it doesn't really matter often. Uh, Valkyria. I think this is an obvious S tier. Uh, I'd say it's like here. Alright, so Blade Wave is a wide sweeping two valor attack that can hit a bunch of things and in some cases kill multiple things. It can clear mines, it can clear barricades. It allows you to push through a bunch of enemy nonsense. So if there's a bunch of barricades and enemies on a guard tower, and mines, it can just clear all of that for two Valor points. It also has anti-range assist if it's the party leader. Typically it won't be the party leader, uh, but it has built-in armor counter, built-in flyer counter in its abilities. It also has a two um, active point single target nuke, and it's a main tank. <laughs> You're like, oh, but it doesn't have lane and call it. It's a main tank that deals damage. <laughs> That's why it's good. And it also can give AOE, uh, anti-assists for archer assist and for range and magic assist for one combat and anti-first strike so if enemies have first strike on you if they have range assist or magic assists it just negates all of them for one combat for each allied unit within a pretty wide radius so you can easily push through choke points and negate tons of spam with this this class for one valor point <laughs> and then for two valor points it can clear mines and break down barricades and put a ton of chip damage on a wide range of enemies because it does a wide sweeping attack. So it has a lot of value for pushing and holding positions. Um, all right, the Sybil, or the Elven, Sybil and Augur. All right, Elven Augur, possibly the best class in the game. I'll go into it in a second. Elven Sybil, I would say it's slightly weaker than Elaine. All right, Elven Augur. Start of battle, row stun damage. That's ridiculous. And then also that it, it does a board nuke afterwards. And then that row stun also damage boosts its board nuke. And then if you have a crit with an elven or an amber eye lens, it gets true strike crit on its board nuke. And then if you confer all that, you can add any, you can add burn, uh, you can add stun, you can add 
frost to it so that you can AOE stun, burn, or freeze. And very often just it critting from the amber lens is enough to kill. It cannot be flipped by feather swords or feather shields because it is not a spell. Is it a hybrid attack that is untyped so it does not get mirror shielded, which is a problem for things uh, like AOE magic, uh, like Trinity Rain. So unlike Trinity Rain, it just hits through everything. Now certain things I think can be covered in it, but because you open with a stun, typically if you target the front row, if there's blockers, one will cover, get stunned, and then the other thing will get stunned, and then when you board nuke at the worst case scenario, they have one cover. But this thing is just absolutely overtuned. It can also cure heal. It can heal while curing a debuff as a passive, as like a quick heal. And it has other things. It has other things that stack with it that make it even more insane, but just for the board nuke. Oh, it also has swap, which allows you to switch positions with an allied unit. So there could be a situation where one of your units is about to die or they're taking on too much damage and you need like a fresh unit to fight the boss. You could swap and use Valor skills and immediately change positions. Or in some cases, let's say you get like a blue unit on a map that's like high up in the corner and it's like one of those useless pre-made AI units. You can just swap with that too, if it's a blue unit. So swap is good, board nuke is good. The opening move, like the first action stun that also deals damage for some reason. I don't know why it deals damage. It's so crazy. And you get plus one fairy, which scales your board nuke. Now the other, the Elven Sybil is very similar, except it has more healing and less damage. And its opening move is a heal that prevents, that cleanses debuffs and prevents debuffs. Or at the very least, it just heals and then prevents debuffs on a row. So you, you get a row heal. So like if you take some magic spam, range assist, uh, mage assist, it heals you know heals some of that away. So a row and then also provides debuff uh, while boosting. It's They have the same board nuke, exact same board nuke. Uh, they, they're at the start of battle abilities. Both give them a fairy, which gives them plus 30 potency for the, the se it's 70 magic, 70 physical potency, you get plus 30 for both. So you get 100 magic, 100 physical. And then if you use uh, the amber eye lens, you get true strike and crit on that. And it's a three, it's not a charge attack either. It's not a charge attack. It's a board nuke that is not a charge attack, but can be built up using the unit's own kit. It's completely insane. Uh, does it need nerfed? Probably, but it'd make the game less fun. But I don't know, man. <laughs> they probably should rework some things. Uh, Sergeant? I think Sergeant's decent. I'll put Sergeant's in low A tier. Its combat is decent. Uh, it has like a little bit of everything, a little bit of damage, a little bit of support. Its Valor skill is fantastic for deploying, especially if something dies from enemy Valor abilities, like the enemy archers using that bow attack that kills you. You can use the Resurrect. It also can Resurrect within a radius. So it can Resurrect and then you can deploy a Bishop to heal. I have a sergeant bishop squad that just gets deployed to res and heal if something gets killed by enemy valor attacks or enemy spam so they can go push another point fresh and all it costs you is two valor points so that's not bad uh, but the combat's decent it's like a generalist that can fit into most team comps lances are one of the best weapons in the game uh just based on the effects they have and the types of lances that exist so having another lance unit it also does bonus damage to calves which can situationally be nice uh, let's see. Snow Ranger. Snow Ranger is definitely an S tier. I'll put it here. Now it has a board nuke that's very potent when combined with a shaman. The shaman debuffs whichever row will take less damage. So typically the front row is what you will defense debuff on your druid slash shaman. And you do need to impetus and it does get hard countered by owls. So it's a little bit worse than these things that do not get hard countered by owls because they just pop off and immediately board nuke. Uh, but if you get the impetus off and you use this, it typically will completely wipe out an entire enemy squad when used correctly and damage boosted, typically by something like Elven Archer. So Elven Archer, Druid, uh, Unifi is the combo I ran. Uh, high initiative boost, like Plume this, uh, Mystic Conferral. This also has impetus. This debuffs the enemies, and then she does her thing, gets impetus, and then you kill, typically. So it's pretty big, nu pretty big nuke, and it also freezes. 
which is unnecessary. But even after she does her board nuke, she still has enough active and passive points to still attack, and she also has a follow-up attack that deals bonus damage to frozen targets, and she freezes targets. However, if an enemy, if an ally hits a thing and then she does her attack, uh, like the ally has to freeze and then she hits and then does bonus damage, but it's still 75% or 75 potency follow-up for one passive point that's built into her kit. So she combos with herself basically and is a pretty good unit. Uh, let's see. Wear line, very similar to Gladiator. It's almost identical to this, except it has the knight bonuses and maybe slight skill changes, but it's basically the same thing. So we'll just put an X to Berserker. Uh, let's see, Prince. Prince late game is pretty good utility. He can damage boost everything immediately. And he's also an evasion tank that's durable. Now he's very similar to Druid, but he boosts every single unit and all of their attacks. And buffs, I find, typically don't get removed that much. I find that debuffs get cleansed more frequently. So when he buffs your board nuke, it tends to stick and the damage tends to stay around. And I do run this with Augur for more bonus damage. It's 20% more damage, so it's pretty huge. Uh, but yeah, he's basically just a slightly better version of this that's more reliable. And he also has chip damage built into his kit. And other things like allowing, you know... Uh, I think he can increase accuracy, he can allow you to block, he can do a bunch of miscellaneous things. I usually don't use him for that, but he has other utility beyond just damage boost. Uh, Dreadnought, I do think, is low S. Now, I know some people don't think this class is super good because it's slow, but on wide pursuit, with board nukes and row attacks, it's ridiculous because she has some of the highest physical attack in the game. And there's also a sword that does increased potency. So you run Wide Pursuit, which is 75% potency, which is 0.75 multiplier for your damage. And then you run the Bounty Hunter Sword, which gives her plus 20%, so 95% potency, which is almost 100% potency on a Wide Pursuit. And when she follows up either Board Nuke or a lane or any kind of row attack, it's huge damage. And if the Board Nuke or the row attack doesn't kill, she typically will clean up the kill. And it's pretty big value and it doesn't hurt you at all and she just has huge damage. Now she also can one-shot things through guard if you really need her to do that and fight bosses very well, but she just has a ton of damage and the damage is instant when used correctly. If you try to have her attack things manually, she can be on the slower side, but with the wide uh, pursuit situation, she just immediately falls up as soon as you attack things. It's huge value. Uh, let's see, soldier, paladin, paladin. Paladin, I feel like, is, like, here. It's not really the best thing. It's kind of like a generalist that has okay magic damage. It's almost like bad Sainted Knight, I think. It's... It's not nearly as good as Sainted Knight. It doesn't have as much, like, healing, and the damage is similar. I'd rather just have a Sainted Knight. I just don't see the value in running a Paladin. Uh, what else do we have? Dark Lord, I don't think you can play as. Overlord, I don't think you can play as these you can play as um we've already done sergeant uh let's do where's berengaria is this her is this considered her i guess this is considered berengaria definitely high s tier probably like either probably a little bit better than elaine actually a little bit worse than elven auger but a lot better than mostly everything else the row stun is crazy, the combos are crazy, uh, her sanguine pursuit is ridiculous and often can kill avoid tanks, keep her alive. It's tanky, it has damage, it has crowd control, all of its abilities are cheap. It basically is just good in any team comp no matter what that comp is doing and it will just add value. It's also reasonably fast so it doesn't really need like a ton of initiative fixing and it has a good start of battle effect. Now typically I do not run it with Sybil or Augur because it has a start of battle effect that's decent, but if I do run it with Sybil, that's usually how I run it with, I'll disable it so that she can get her bonus damage on the board nuke, and then when she board nuke, she'll like put burn or stun so that when she follow ups with her big attack, she gets 150 potency instead of 75 versus afflicted, which is pretty huge for one active point. <laughs> it probably needs to be changed to two, to be honest. It's kind of overtuned. Uh, the other ones, all the Marquis or Marquesses, however you say that, are considered really good. 
people use them in PvP, so they're probably at least all S tiers. So we'll just throw these in S tier and just assume uh, that they're all S tiers because they're a post game class that have ridiculous abilities. All right, let's just double check. I think that's everything. Yeah, let's just go through, just double check. Some of these are duplicates, like the male versus female. Priestess, Crusader, Soldier, Necromancer. Necromancer, I don't think you get to play as. Oh yeah, Viking, sorry. Almost missed Viking. All right, Viking. Honestly, Viking is probably at least A tier. Uh, just like House Carl, it has a really good row attack that as long as it gets like true strike from a lens or crit true strike from an amber lens, or even like true strike from like a witch ability or something, it can deal really good damage to the row for cheap, but it's still lower accuracy and not as reliable or good as Dark Marquess, which is significantly stronger. So, yeah. All right, so here's the list for now. Uh, some of these things can move up or down based on playtime or builds. Maybe someone discovers some crazy build or some crazy synergy. Obviously, things will move up if there's some obvious crazy synergy that's competitive with these options. Uh, but here is where I think we're at right now. This is obviously for true Zenoiran mode with the time factor like added as consideration or like one of the major things is we're considering how long it takes to beat content. So like the classes that tend to have good row attacks or good damage or good buffs or good debuffs or whatever are typically going to rank higher than the classes that need work, need a lot of things fixed or lack something serious, whether it's they lack something through their weapons, they lack something through their kit, compared to other things, they're just weaker. Like some of the best tanks in the game are just tanky enough to tank a hit or two and then your team kills them. So like these tanks that are just like straight up tanks that want to absorb a ton of hits tend to be worse because the enemies start doing crazy damage and will kill you really quickly and easily. And you're better off not letting them do that. At least that's been my experience. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe if you enjoyed this or found this useful and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.